Louis and Walter and their colleagues started be to become more frustrated with our continued skepticism. Mm -hmm. And Louis started making statements about how, you know, he didn't have a lot of time to waste on this and he had other important things to do. So why weren't we just agreeing that what they'd found was uh, convincing and just go along with it. Um, it became, and it started to become more and more personal yeah. and politically driven rather than driven by the ideal of science and investigation and oh that's interesting you know that contradicts what might we learn from that. Can I ask you what you mean by political? Political in the sense that these are powerful people mm -hmm. and that going up against them can have repercussions. Mm -hmm. And if it becomes personal in addition to that, while well, you try to keep that under the surface, it starts to develop uh, an atmosphere of uh, conflict mm -hmm. and so the work becomes not one that's not that's easy mm -hmm. and collegial mm -hmm. and collaborative <laughs> but, and collaborative but rather competitive yeah. and aggressive right. and Bill dealt with it in the ways that, that he dealt with it, and I dealt with it by trying to figure out a way to ask a different kind of question yeah. than was it the asteroid or was it something else? Right. Because from my perspective, I didn't really have the data to say whether it was or it wasn't. And so the main thrust of my dissertation really became, well, how finally can we tell time? How, how precisely can we tell time in these rocks that span the Cretaceous tertiary boundary? Mm -hmm. And the way I did that was, you know, they, they had published their scenario, scenario and based on their modeling, they thought that most of the effects of the impact and the killing mechanisms, whether it be, you know, short-term cooling from the dust that knocking out the sunlight mm -hmm. to uh, other kinds of acid rain and so forth, uh, that that would have taken place within a century or mm -hmm. so. And so I thought, well, one way I could ask the question within the context of the Cretaceous tertiary uh, debate and the, the asteroid debate differently is, well, let's look at some of these rock sequences that people think have the best, the most continuous record. And if this is supposed to have happened within a century, do we really have a chance of precisely recognizing and having preserved in those sequences every century so that we know that, okay, it happened and it, it's likely that, you know, we have a, a rock record that's giving us snapshots of every century. And the likelihood after running the models was very low yeah. that, that you would have that yeah. kind of temporal resolution. It was a great response. I mean, it's a it's a it's an epistemological response to the to the asteroid hypothesis. You're, you're asking the question: What can we know based on the evidence that we have as paleontologists? And I think you wrote at some point um, that uh, in that in one of the areas, I think it's the San Juan Basin that has the best record. Only one of every two hundred centuries is represented. Well, I'm glad to see that someone's read that paper. 